The self-made multimillionaire has made a career rescuing businesses on the brink of ruin. He's turned around Ryman, the stationer, and high street lingerie chains La Senza and Contessa. But now he's taken on his biggest challenge yet, Millwall Football Club. The new chairman is desperate to improve the image of the club and stem losses of two million pounds a year. So now he's going back to the floor to find out how he can make the Lions a roaring success. But how will he cope with vandalized toilets? Bastards. So many ways. Complaints about dirt. food. You've got cack range of beer. You've got a cack range of pies. And his fans, whose slogan is, no one likes us, we don't care. And what will he learn to improve his business? I wouldn't like to work with Theo. Theo likes everything perfect. And I don't think I could um, work for him. It's OK to live with him, be married with him, but uh, I couldn't work for him. In they go. When we first met, which was 24 years ago, we had nothing. So everything that we have today is because of Theo's hard work. Perfetus, now worth an estimated 30 million pounds, left school at 16 to work as a shop assistant. He found he hated taking orders and set up his own finance company, turning round struggling businesses. He took over second division Millwall three years ago. I've never failed in any business I've actually gone into, but football clubs are nothing like any other business. You really are gambling all the time. You're trying to get people to come in. The more people you come in, the more money you make, but you've got to give them the product. To get the product, you've got to spend money, and that's the gamble you take. Millwall, a tough Docklands club with a reputation for racist supporters, was in administration with debts of £10 million when Cypriot-born Perfetus stepped in. To survive, he has to run a very tight ship. How do I look? Today, the South London club is playing Lancashire team Berry. With just 23 home matches a year, this is one of the few opportunities for Millwall to make big money. Buongiorno. The boss's first job is working with Sharon, trying to sell food to the fans. I'm good. What you got for me today? Oh, we have got you inside a kiosk serving our away supporters. Is this the only kiosk that's open? Yeah, we're the only one that does the away supporters. Um... So you've got, you're going to have to handle 350 people from this kiosk? Yeah. In, in 15 minutes, at half time? time yeah. Perfetus is a bit older than most of Sharon's staff. We need to get a lot more mature staff. The problem at the moment is we've got staff, but we're having a lot of um, 15 and 16 year olds. Right. And they're very helpful and they do their job. But when it comes to beers, they're not allowed to, to serve. serve the right. beer. So this is where the problem is. We can't seem to get mature staff to stay. Why is that? I don't know. Unfortunately, Millwall has a bit terrible reputation. Right. Because, I mean, I've worked here since the Grand opened, and even now if I say to anybody, oh, I work at Millwall Football Club, they'll go, oh, they're racist, or et cetera. So, are we, paying, are we what, paying the going rate? From what I know from other football clubs locally, we pay more. Right, so we in pay fact, more than we pay a premium to get people, and we still can't get people. Yeah. One reason is that the kiosk staff are often subjected to abuse from fans. Sharon used to be able to radio for help but her walkie-talkie was taken away to save money, and now she has to rely on the phone. When I first started working here, we had radio contacts. Right. Now, if something goes wrong, i.e. when we played Man City, right. and I was trying to dial police control, they were engaged. Because everyone else was dialing police control because there was a problem. Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, right. absolutely. Okay. So right. that really didn't help at the time, though, because at the time, I'm not worried about anybody else. I'm thinking about me and my yeah. staff. I thought, what happened? And this bloke called me a black bastard. I'm a whore. I'm a prostitute. I'm an illegal Lost. immigrant. I'm a this, I'm a that. You name it. It's so frightening. But all I could do was stand there. I couldn't say a word. But if you feel a lot safer, if you're the radio. Yeah. Running a football club is hugely expensive, so sponsorship is vital. The player's strip comes free from a local company and is looked after by Putty, the kit man. Nobody can make money in the second division, not if you've got any aspirations and ambitions. Everybody tries to get people to actually 
sponsor the club and supply rather than us having to pay. Just like we've got to uh, get a soft drinks manufacturer to supply these towels so we don't have to go out and buy towels. Until we get out of this division, we've got to believe, we've got to accept that we're going to make losses or we can sell our players, can't we, Patty? We certainly can't. Well, you see? See? If I said I was going to sell the players, you'd kill me, wouldn't you? That's right. More than my last word to sell the players just to show a profit. I'm afraid our top players earn thousands a week. And uh, it's a lot of money you've got to find. Hence, we've got, we got to uh, skimp and scrape to try and find the money to give the fans a good team. See, our fans don't mind what we pay our players, as long as they perform. What our fans don't like is if we pay a lot of money to a player, it turns up out there and becomes a ballerina. Turn that round the right way so we can see his name. Thank you. Yes, sir. He is a bossy son, sir. With losses of two million pounds a year, Perfetus is always on the lookout for savings. Hey, Pai. Yeah. What's this? What's what? What are these? Sluggies, briefs. Briefs that the pros use, certainly. Well, we pay for them. We pay for them. Well, you pay for them, rather. What do I do for a living? You own an underwear company. So lingerie. Yeah. Lingerie, women's. So lingerie, women's. Women's. Yeah, what do women's? Lots of sluggies. Lots of sluggies. Well, I wouldn't know about that. Maybe I'd try them. No, I wouldn't know about that being women, would I? Yeah. Well, you might wear them yourself. So, were well, you going to get some women's so, so underwear for the players? I'm sure, or? no, no, I'm sure Triumph would be honoured to supply the Millwall football team with a year's supply of sluggies, if I asked them nicely. Lovely. On, a on the basis of one of our business partners, I'm sure oh. it's not an issue. We'd be honoured to accept them. Well, consider, consider the deal done. Next, it's on to the executive boxes. So that's 24 Fosters, one ice. That's it. Bucket at the ready. Can you stop crying for your ice bucket? All right. Okay. Are you all right? <laughs> I've got to give them a laugh. Because that's what we have to do. I know, you? I've you know. seen you, I've seen you. VIP clients are a vital source of revenue. At top clubs, a single executive box can cost £50,000 a year. Millwall VIPs can hire a whole box for as little as £250 a game. Today, Perfetus has 60 VIPs to look after. <laughs> no, no. You ain't even listening, look. I... <laughs> The boxes are run by Michael. The boxes sometimes I think are a little bit too good for the, some of the clientele you get in there. You have to sort of um, look at them and think, you know, should it be them in the boxes? But that's not for me to ask those questions. The standard fare in the executive boxes is bottled beer and hot dogs. But some VIPs want more. Glass of milk, please. Irish, if you got it. I throw we have them. We've got his teachers. Will that do? No, that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. I tell you what, we will have malt here next week on Tuesday. Are you coming on Tuesday? No. Right. In that case. Maybe next. The teachers on the house then. But from Tuesday onwards, we will have more whiskey in executive boxes because That's they are the executive boxes. Absolutely. Downstairs in the kiosk, there's even less choice of alcohol. Two fosters, please. 420, please. Perfetus is serving the away fans. Good lad, well done. Thank you. Steak and kidney pie. Three. Three steak and kidney. One steak and kidney. Lovely, thank you. Five chocolate. Right, who wants a lager? Me, please. Right, two ten, please, sir. Thanks. At half time, the kiosk can only sell beer for 15 minutes, so every second counts. Bitters run out. Ah, uh, and can you change the bitter pump, please? Come back, I'll top it off. You're right. So why does it run out so early? Because that's how much. Because we can't um, change the, the barrel, barrel halfway through, right, so okay. we've just got to basically right. wing it. So. Yeah. And guaranteed, the busiest time, we'll run, it always does we'll it. Out. Yeah. Right. Millwall has catered for 500 Berry fans, but only 205 have turned up. And now, at 2 0 down, some of them are losing their appetite. Overpriced. Not good quality. Oh, oh is this a football game? You tell the difference when you go up now. Better pies, better beer. Cheaper beer, cheaper pies. Right, what's the matter with my pies, mate? Overpriced and you... overquality. Oh, no, they're lovely quality. No, mate. 
They're nice and berry, are they? Yeah, we've got nice, nice and berry, are they? As the drink goes down, the chorus of food criticism goes up. Oh, this is fucking disgusting! <laughs> it's not been a good day for the kiosk. Only a third of the food cooked has been sold. See this one? We haven't done well on the burgers at all today. Hot dogs. And burgers. What's going to happen to those? Rubbish. Goes in a black bag. Rubbish. What a total waste. Absolutely. That's just there my is, drawer. There's there those drawers and There's that those drawers. drawers there, a whole drawer. So this has been a disaster area. This kiosk today has been unprofitable. We'd have lost money on it. It's unfortunate, but the food sales depend on their mood sometimes. <laughs> Are you allowed to take the food home? No. Why not? It was a rule. Well, these are all rules from when I well, very first begun. That's an interesting one. Would you like to take the food home? Yeah, yeah. I don't see why not. It should yeah. be offered to the staff. Because and at the end of the day, I mean, it's so much of it gets wasted anyway, so if we are allowed to take it, I'm that's I, less I, wasted. I, I, I would have no objections or problems with no, that. Deep. I think there's no reason why you can't take the food home. So mm. starting today, if you're going to take this, if you want to take that home, okay, everyone get the you can me. take whatever's left, you can take home. Thank you. Perfitis has been called in to clear up after yesterday's game. The 20,000-seater stadium used to be maintained by three full-time staff. But to save money, now there's only oh, two, Colin and Cess. And today, they've got a major yes. problem. Blimey. Well, they have done a rip the pipe out of the top there. This is the visiting supporters. Right. One pipe there and a series of pipes. I mean, well, they just took the pipes out? I just ripped them out. Bastards. This is what happens when you win 4-0 at home. There's always a price to pay. A win at home gives you problems. This makes me very angry and I get very upset. The only thing I've got to say is that, as upset I am with the Berry supporters, ours do it as well, so I can't just moan about the Berry supporters. Bloody mindless. Totally bloody mindless. The vandalism, together with poor food sales and a low turnout, mean that the Berry game was a lost opportunity in Millwall's battle to break even. Now, obviously, if I wasn't here today, I wouldn't know about this particular incident. It would just get dealt with and sorted, and that would be the end of it. The thing is, you've got nice facilities here at the stadium. People should just respect them, shouldn't they? I think that'll do us, wouldn't it? It's not only vandalism that causes problems after a match. Getting the stadium clean with only two members of staff and nearly a mile of flooring is a near impossibility. Why is this one so dirty compared to the others? The thing is, it's like getting a chance to actually do it all. Um, the reason you can do this after one game and then you come again the next, the next match, it's exactly the same. This will take probably most of the morning to, to do the whole lot properly. Right. Um, about, we could, we could uh, take the worst of it off now. How about taking the worst of it? How long yes, would that take? That, the worst of it, uh, I would say, probably even a couple of hours. Right. What bodies have we got available? Um, just me and Colin at the moment. Right. Yeah, no, we've only got one little machine. And How long would it take to do the whole stadium? About two weeks. About two weeks? Yeah. The right machine for the job is, is, is a lot larger machine, obviously, than right. that. And it's a ride-on machine at a cost of about £20,000. Right. But is the answer one of those, or is it another one of these? It's the other machine, the right machine, yeah. the big machine. How long would it take to do this with one of those? I should imagine you could do this in half an hour. So basically, with this machine, with a game Saturday and a game on Tuesday, there's no way we can do it? No way at all. So the answer is, we've got to look at the, getting a decent price on the other machine and see if we can get someone to sponsor it. But there's more in store for Perfitis. A bulb's blown in the scoreboard. Have I ever told you I'm scared of heights? I'm going to say goodbye to my family. Yeah, I'll just go and turn the power off. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll hang around up here, shall I? You love the BBC, don't you? Is someone holding this ladder? Yeah, which bulb was it? The right-hand side. You've got to take the panel on the right-hand side. Yeah, that's it. 
I hate heights. He's a bit slow to this, isn't he, eh? Very slow. What it is for you, I was saying, it's like, it's handy you helping me at the moment because... Well, Sesh, you know you only have to ask, mate. Just give me a call. Normally, I ain't got that sort of help, so... Um, there's been times where Colin's down the training ground and I can't actually go on the ladder on my own, so... Right. Um, so certain things had to be um, put off. Yeah, you know what we forgot, don't you? The bulb. I've got the bulb, yeah. Yeah, it's no good down there, is it? Or have I got to come back down again? Yeah. How do you feel? That's it. White knuckles here, look. White knuckles? I've got to tell you, I'm going to have to change my underpants after this. <laughs> and my white knuckles. The thing that's come out of uh, working with uh, Colin Sess is um, that they should be left to do the more skillful jobs and the more remedial tasks you should get somebody in to do. And that'll be a more cost-effective way of using their time. Blimey, I'm not doing that in a hurry again. Millwall's players can't practice at the stadium. They've got their own training ground 10 miles away. They're the greatest assets the club has, and they have to be protected and pampered. Perfetus's first job is to make them breakfast. Toast, toast, toast. That's six bits of toast. Your toast is burning for you. He wants jam on it. He does want jam on it. He said that when I negotiated his last contract. I said, what do you want, jam on it? It's very good. We've got a big knife here, if you find it easier. All football players from the year dot have been molly cuddled, and of course you can't change it afterwards. We shouldn't be doing this. They should be eating at home a finely balanced cereal, and that should be it for training. I think we spoil them. You're mothering them, aren't you? You're mothering them. Does your mum do this for you? I'd make them make their own toast. They're not oh, allowed in the kitchen. No, 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 just put a couple of toasters outside, put the bread outside. We haven't got any unless you get... Well, you haven't asked for any. Well, we will then. Well, if you ask for some, you'll get some. I wouldn't know who's having toast to charge them. See, that's... Not a problem. problem, just charge them a flat fee. Oh, well. Make sure they eat them. Players have to pay for their food. Do you know how much we pay our players? They get cheap. They're cheap. Oh, our, our payroll is about two and a half million quid a year. Right? That's a lot of money, So that's it? a lot of money. If they come on 450p, then I suggest they go to another football club. But the club's top scorer, and highest earner, doesn't agree. I don't think the players should pay for the food. Is that right? Every business I've got and every business I know has got a staff canteen that's subsidised and, and, and working people pay, pay, pay for their food. And the players, on the money the football players earn, why they should there be an exception? In fact, it should be the totally the opposite as opposed to not paying. You should be paying full price, not subsidies. Yeah, we're, we're, we're paid to play football on the football pitch, are we? Uh, yeah, it's, you know, people are made to work, well, will serve behind shops and work, uh, serve behind counters and work in factories, right? They, they, and they work as hard as you guys work. Keeping the 19 acres of training ground in good condition is a tough job when 50 players are churning up the pitches five days a week. Just follow your line. Drop, drop it down and just follow the line where you just come down. The groundsmen hope this rare visit by the chairman could lead to better equipment. But Papitis isn't having any of it. You made your groundsman yet? <laughs> this is about 30 years old. Is it really? It's done well, isn't it? He's done well. You know, 30 years old? 30 years old. You know, I'll tell you, it's probably an antique. You can probably get a few more for it, it now. It goes well, but I'm yeah. just saying, it's, with the amount of work we're yeah. doing now, but yeah. it's like everything else, Ron. In an ideal yeah. world, you'd yeah. want the best of everything. We're That's a second right. division football club. That's right. When we're in the... i tell you what you should do, Ron. Yeah. You have the new manager up by the throat and you yeah. say to him, get yeah. us in the Premiership. That's because right. Theo said, if you get us in the Premiership, we'll be able to afford to yeah. get all new That's gear. Right. That's right. In, in, right. in the short term, would it be possible getting um, an enclosed like, canopy? Yeah. Have yeah. you asked anybody for one? Well, no, we, we haven't asked anybody Well, if yet. you ask, if you ask, you, know, you never well, know, know. You never know. You never know. It's money-wise, and I'm going to get money, but... Yeah, as you know, we watch the pennies very heavily. Know, we don't want to go that. bust again, do I we? Know. Been there, done it, done seen it. it. Yeah. That'll do us for yeah. a moment, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Perfetus's biggest battle is trying to change Millwall's fearsome reputation. The populist image of Millwall when I joined, 
was one of violence, racism. And that's not what we want to portray. Like every other football club, we got, we got people that attach themselves to this football club that we'd rather do without. So there's been a lot of image change since, we've, uh, since I've taken over. Off the pitch, the club shop is the public face of Millwall and it's vital for revenue. The, the badge has changed, we've gone to white shirts. There's all sorts of things that we've done to actually uh, give ourselves a, a more modern image. But there's still certain things that fans actually like. Well, these ones are 5 dollars What does it say on it? No one likes this, which is uh, sort of, you know. This is a Millwall mug with a very famous Millwall uh, cry of no one likes us, we don't care. But we do care, I promise you, we care, we do want to be liked. It's a really good seller. I've had to order, re reorder twice this season already. And we've got it on the T-shirt, we've got it on the mug, we've got it on there. There's not really a lot of other stuff. And um, sometimes we, we keep it away from children's, uh, you know, souvenirs. Or... I'm very relaxed about the slogan, very, very relaxed about it. What you mustn't do yeah. in any turnaround situation, which is what this is, right, is throw the baby out with the bathwater. That will be disastrous because you'll meet resistance Right? And you'll spend your time putting out fires. Over time, if it disappears and another something else comes in, then that's great. But it's important you don't destroy a soul. You can go too far. Tonight, Millwall will play Bristol City. Security is high because their fans have clashed in the past. Perfitis is going to be in the front line, working as a steward. Can I just ask, first of all, put your hands up those who have not stewarded at Millwall before. Okay, there's a number of them. <laughs> Bristol City tonight, I think Bristol are well down the division. Obviously, Millwall have had a couple of good results. We're looking at a crowd of probably in excess of 8,000 tonight. And then away support, probably about 450 to 500. Yeah? My information from my intelligence people is that there is none of our hooligans travelling up from Bristol. However, those who've been here before will appreciate that on the blur of a whistle or a prayer's reaction to something happening, things can change very quickly. The match will need 160 stewards, mostly expensive agency staff, which, together with the bill for policing, will cost Millwall £12,000. It's a big chunk out of the night's takings. Millwall is attempting to encourage more young fans to the den with its family-friendly enclosure. Below the executive boxes, We've got what's called the family enclosure, and they can buy a very cheap child's ticket to bring their child along, to start getting them supporting the club. But Kath, a steward at Millwall for seven years, thinks that the language coming from the executive boxes above the family enclosure isn't for young ears. It's more because oh, it's a children's area, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I have to tell them a lot about that. The whole idea of a family enclosure is to try and shield people from that type of language. So for that, we've actually put signage up all inside the boxes now. It's an, it's an issue and it's one that we're, you know, we indeed, we need to... We need to stamp out. I mean, there's no question about that. At half-time, Perfitis finally gets to meet his own fans, but they're not happy. They've got improved facilities in the ground because the facilities outside of the ground, there's no, there's no facilities. There are no facilities at all. When you attract a better degree of fan, a happier fan, if you can get it right in the ground. We are surrounded again by breeze blocks. Who wants to be in a prison? And you've got 10 teeth at the bar, you've got cack range of beers, you've got a cack range of pies, you've got the kids running around like they've got nothing. They're going to be the uh, supporters of the future, isn't they? Who's this then? Is this the chairman? Hello! They're doing well, they're going to win this league, I think, this season. You reckon? Yeah, I do, yeah. It doesn't matter, Chairman. You've got all that anyway, haven't you? we do. You've got to learn the way you don't care if they win or lose. I know you right, don't. Grand Rue supporters, not all these people coming. They're the ones who want it. I think I care as much as anyone else. I sweat buckets to make sure we win. But tonight, they don't win. In the last minute, Bristol City equalise. It could be a setback to Millwall's dream of First Division millions. Threw away two points, we drew 1-1. One, one. 
I think that affects me. I'm a terrible loser. I sulk for ages. After his week, it's back to the Millwall boardroom. It really has uh, shown me what everybody does day to day here. Kiosks. Great time in there with Sharon. And she is, as a superstar, I mean, she was telling us about some of the things that they got to put up with. The racist, the foul language, the abuse that they're getting there. So sometimes she felt vulnerable. And if there's something quite heavy going down, they've got a phone in the kiosk. We do need radios. Right. When you're in administration and you're crying out for money, that's one thing they had to get the chop, unfortunately. Right, so they, the administrators got yeah. rid of them? Yeah, mostly. And we've never replaced them since? No. It's been there, sitting there, seeing it myself. We need them. We need the radios. The other thing that came about was the huge amount of wastage we had in, at the Berry game. Yeah. It was soul-destroying. Now, mm. I took it upon myself to say to the staff they can take it home. <laughs> and I knew the minute I'd done that that you were going to give me one of your looks. Okay. And, and <laughs> tell me what a silly boy I was. Okay. Because of the really strict health and hygiene laws that's in there, if, for instance, one of my kiosk workers should take one of those cooked burgers So home, they take home half a dozen burgers, yeah, two patties, right. three pies, yeah. right? And they come down with salmonella. What do I do? It may be a lot of waste, but it's nothing compared to, you know, food pies and scared or whatever. It yeah. just feels so wrong. Exactly, yeah. It just feels so wrong that we can throw that sort of food away. Yeah. We've got the issues of maintenance. The biggest key thing is the floors in the concourses. It really does take a long time to clean. And I asked Colin again to get back to you with the cost of a sit-down, sit-on machine. Excellent. Or the alternative is having another person to operate the small machine and have more hours. Right, training ground. I've taken it upon myself to make some changes. I can't see why on that little side table we can't put those big flasks with a little tap on and those good industrial toasters, the ones that you flick the thing up. Yeah. You know the ones I mean? Yeah. A load of band-aids. Yeah. Savalon cream. Sav <laughs> <laughs> well, the flasks are not hot. They don't get hot, no, do they? No, they won't. Because They'll burn their fingers on the toasters, though. <laughs> they won't burn there. These are hard <laughs> football These are players. Hard. Oh, they're babies, boys. <laughs> Providing they give clear instructions on how to do the toast and pour the tea, we have no problem. <laughs> I don't believe I'm having this conversation. <laughs> we, we can get that. Uh, yeah, straight away, yeah, can you do it? Right. Yeah. yeah, do it straight away, get it done, and then that will take... If I ever have to go and work there again, I won't have to make a toast. Perfetis has bought a new ride-on floor cleaner and walkie-talkies for all the kiosks. Staff can take away any leftover food at their own risk, but the players, who are now wearing a year's supply of free sloggy underwear, now have to make their own toast. Millwall are on course for the first division.